So let's do my October bullet journal set up together and let me just talk to you a little bit about that. If we haven't met, I'm Viv. Welcome to Art with Viv. And for my cover, I decided to go with the raven. Ravens have a bunch of folklore and mythology that surround them. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. But first, let me tell you, I am doing this with gouache. I did gouache in my September bullet journal and I really enjoy, I just, I just really enjoyed it and I'm still learning. But this time, instead of, I did a lot of blending in the September bullet journal. So I tried a different style for my October where I'm doing it more like a Van Gogh-esque type painting. I'm just doing streaks and brush strokes of different colors, letting it blend right on the paper. I also switched to an acrylic brush that's a little stiffer. It has synthetic bristles, and that seems to handle the weight of the paint, of the gouache, the thickness of it, a lot better than watercolor brushes. Watercolor brushes, for me, they carry entirely too much water for gouache. And that's fine if you want to do washes, like thin, like use gouache as you would use watercolor, but I don't. I'm, I want to learn like all of the intricacies and the way that the gouache acts and reacts for its unique properties. If I wanted to use watercolor, I would just get out my watercolor. So that's, I don't want to use my gouache as watercolor. I want to really find out what it can do. And so that's what I am working on. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing just sort of painterly strokes of different colors, sort of like Van Gogh. And I've got this raven. He's on top of a skull and he is in the moonlight. Now ravens, or have many many mythologies in different cultures they can either be an ill omen or they can be looked at as a guardian uh, they are the largest member of the crow family they are smart they are curious and those bad boys can hold a grudge and yes they can recognize your face they recognize human faces and if you piss them off they will hold a grudge for a while they don't forget they also can mimic human speech. So when Edgar Allan Poe wrote about the raven and the raven was saying nevermore, it's a good possibility he was saying nevermore because ravens have been known to mimic human speech. So I think that's really, really interesting. I did not know that until I researched them. I know starlings and of course parrots can uh, imitate humans. I did not realize ravens could. Now, um, if you have a group of ravens, it's called an unkindness. I thought that, but now a crows, a group of crows is called a murder. So I think that's pretty interesting. But uh, crows history, I mean, not crows, ravens history goes all the way back to the Bible. They were in the Old Testament. The raven was the first bird that Noah sent out to find land. And also in Elijah, they were they brought food to elijah and provided for him now odin was thought he is the like the boss of the viking gods odin he is thought to have been accompanied by two ravens and they would go fly off and then bring him back news from around the the kingdom the world his whatever gods have their kingdom i don't know what it's called and that's what they did and they would also follow the soldiers into battle and of course feast on some of the dead soldiers now um in let's see in greek mythology the raven was once white and the myth has it or the story has it that um they were messengers to Apollo, and one of the white ravens came and gave him the message that his lover had cheated on him, and that got him so upset that he burnt the raven, and so ever since then, the ravens have been black and not white. And in Sweden, they believe that ravens are the ghost of murdered people who did not have a Christian burial, 
in Germany they think that they are damned souls. It's just such a wide range of myths and stories about ravens. I think it is so interesting. Now the indigenous people of the American Pacific Northwest, they have a really strong relationship with the ravens. They're featured in their art, they're featured in their creation stories, um, and they can be either portrayed as a trickster or a hero. But these little guys are really interesting to me. And this raven, the way that I painted him with my gouache, is I decided to paint light colors first. Um, except for right now I'm just doing some shadows. That's going to be like the really darkest areas. And then I'm just going to come back with some blues and purples. And that's going to act as my highlights. And then I'm going to come back and clean it up with some more of the black but I didn't want him to be obviously solid black. That would be boring and you wouldn't be able to see his details. And if you look at a raven's feathers, oh my gosh, they have a rainbow of colors in them when the sun hits them. They are really beautiful animals or birds. Well, I guess birds can be animals. They have these beautiful blues, purples, reds, golds. They are all reflected in their shiny black feathers when that sun shines on them. So that was what I was trying to sort of reflect. I, I put in some nice blues, some purples, and that was going to be sort of my highlights so that you could see the shape of his wings, the shape of his head. Like I said, it's the light and dark that makes things look three-dimensional. So if I just painted him solid black, he would be very graphic. He would be very flat. You would still know that it was a bird or a raven, but it just wouldn't be very interesting to the eyes. I put him on top of the skull sort of as a nod to him following people into battle or following the soldiers or the, the warriors into battle and then, you know, cleaning up the dead. So that's why I put him on a skull and because we know October is our spooky month and I love the spooky month. Oh my gosh, I love it. So that's why I chose that and I did the October in sort of a blood drippy sort of font that I drew and I like that. I really like it. Um, I wish I had done it in a brighter red so that it, the darker background wouldn't have competed so much with it but I still it's still fine. I like it. So also did you know that they have that the Ravens had the sort of reputation especially among indigenous people that they um could lead you to where deer are like they call they call out to the hunters to if they see deer i don't know if this is a myth or if this is true it sounds like it could be true and that the hunters would know where the game is and they could come and you know kill the game and of course as a reward the raven would get the innards. Also, ravens and wolves have a really close relationship. They um, follow wolves and, of course, eat whatever the wolves have left over. Whatever the wolves leave, if they have a kill, they'll eat whatever the wolf leaves behind. But it's also thought that they call to the wolves when there is prey near so that the wolves can catch it. Again, I'm not sure if that's 100% true, but it sounds like it could be because animals have been known to work together in nature. So now for my skull, instead of painting it all white, I went with some blue for the shadow, sort of a greenish blue, and add just a little bit of black to darken it up. Again, I really like gouache because you can blend it right on the paper and it reactivates. So even if it's dry, it dries on the paper, I can come back with a damp brush wet it and that'll it'll start blending with whatever I put on top of it of course that is also a drawback because you don't want your colors to get too muddy so you really have to be careful with that but it is one of the things I enjoy about gouache is you can reactivate it with just a little bit of water and sort of blend it again if you want to come in with another color right on the paper or you you know you can blend it of course on the palette as well so I really like this thing that I've got going on. Now I'm coming back in with some white gouache just for the highlights and just to kind of blend it around. And then it also um, 
sort of knocks back some of the darkness. If you put a light, a light glaze of that white, you can still see whatever color underneath it. So it just sort of lightens it up if you've gotten it too dark in a spot. So I've learned that about it, that you can use white to sort of lighten up a color that's underneath if you need to, if you go too dark. And um, I let that dry. I also gave him beautiful, like, yellow eyes to match that moon. I'm coming in with some highlights on that beak. And those highlights are both white and blue because I thought that would be pretty interesting. Now, again, I'm coming back. You see, I painted over some of my darker shadows with that blue and purple. So I'm coming back with the black. And I am getting those feathers that are signature to... The raven that go across the top of his bill they're sort of stick out there and then he has a little bit under his chin as well and just trying to get in those shadows so that he has a more of a, a three-dimensional look more of a realistic look without getting too realistic and again it all i'm also trying to do sort of the different colors on him like monet i'm not monet well monet too but i was thinking more of van gogh and he was, he's really simple. It looks complicated, but it was really simple to do this pretty little raven. And I really enjoyed him. And I think at the end he came out really well. So I'm just going to let you watch here. I am just adding in first some black, really deep shadows. And then coming back, that's another beautiful thing about gouache. You can paint light colors over dark colors. Unlike watercolor you cannot paint a dark i mean a light color over a dark color and be able to see it in watercolor but gouache is very forgiving and you can so i'm really enjoying getting in those these sort of feathery brush strokes to make it look like feathers and it really is starting to shape him up and just get his wing feathers defined with some of this black gouache and I'm doing sort of, you know, really rough brush strokes. I want it to look a little raggedy. I don't want it to be too smooth. But I do want some of those blues and purples to show through. He is starting to look really good. And I have enjoyed this crow very much. And even if I had more time, if I didn't want this to be a five-hour video, I could really, really make this crow realistic with gouache. And I think I may do that later on. Go in and paint another, not crow, raven. Another raven with some gouache and really take my time and go real realistic and see how that works out. Now I'm just mixing some of the white with some of that purple and blue to make the highlights. And in some areas I'm just putting straight white on it just to give it some sparkle. And that also gives those feathers some more shape. Now, as I finish up his feet here, I've decided that that was too white for the calendar. So I took and drew a calendar on a black piece of paper and just glued it on there. That way, I think it looks better than the white. The white was too stark with all of those deep contrasty colors. So now I'm going to do my monthly planning page for the whole overview. All I did was I glued in two pieces of purple paper but I only glued in half because I want to make those be folding sort of folding little leaflets and in that center I just took a purple marker so that I wouldn't have that stark white center right in the middle 
of my two papers. I folded the bottom. I only glued half of the paper into the journal. The outer edges I did not glue in because they are going to flip over sort of like a little tip in because I have found in September that what I needed the most room to do is plan my content. So I needed a lot of area for my monthly content. So I've got my four pillars here of content that I do, YouTube, social media, my membership, and Tuesday's tip. Just going ahead and doing that with white gel pen, putting mon monthly content up here. And then on the insides where you can tip those purple in, let me see if I can show you. See how those, I can do notes, task lists, whatever I need to do. And I've got like twice the amount of space to plan out my monthly content. So I really like that. Instead of trying to paint with gouache onto this cardstock, I'm just using some stickers. These stickers I got but probably 30, 20, 30 years ago. Well, yeah, it's been a while. It's at least 20 years ago, if not more. Um, and I got it from what, Creative Memories when everybody was doing the Creative Memories scrapbooking. And yes, these stickers are 20 years old and they still stick. And I think they look really good on that purple. And I'm still going with the Halloween theme. I decided to just take my Posca pen and paint in a few, uh, I was going to say sunflowers. Why do I have sunflowers on my brain? Spider webs, just to make it look more spooky and to brighten it up some, just to give it a little bit of something, something, I don't know. And I decided to put little pieces of candy corn by each of the little columns and then a few more stickers where you tip in for the notes of that content planning. So that is a lot of room for content planning and I am really enjoying it. So now I'm going to show you how I'm doing. going to do one of my, I'm just going to do one weekly spread because whew, that'd be a lot to show you all of them. This is, this would just go on forever and we don't want to do that. So again, with my gouache, I did a nice little glowy moon. I did the darker gouache in the center and lightened it as it went away from that center. I decided I wanted a nice gloomy sort of purpley gray background for the night. This is a little graveyard scene. And then on the bottom, I'm just painting some black foliage going to go ahead and add some trees and then while it's still wet I just take that white gouache into that black and it turns into gray and that gives it a little highlight and it defines it from that background so that you can see that it is a tree and it doesn't get completely lost in that purpley gray background and of course I'm giving giving it some branches I want it to be sort of a spooky forest graveyard that that's what I had in my mind when I drew it out and it's got a little ghost, it's got some headstones, and of course some jack-o'-lanterns. So that's what I decided to do for my artwork for my weekly layout. And I went into with some blues and grays and did those background trees. As those trees get further away, they get lighter blue, sort of gray. As they're closer to us, they're more black. So that's, that's my thinking there went ahead painted in my jack-o'-lantern their little eyes and mouths really a pale yellow and of course their flesh is orange with a little bit of dark orange in the shadows you could even mix a little bit of red in there to for those darker shadows totally up to you my ghost was just white gouache and then i put in a little bit of purple and yellow for the shadows and the bottom of course is black grass because it is dark so the grass is going to look black and that gives it that that look that they are out in the wild with all kinds of weeds and grass growing up around the pumpkins and those gray tombstones headstones whatever you want to call them but i really like this one i think it came out really cute and then of course i just outlined all of my boxes all of my sections with a micro in black of course and I just did my days of the week long you know long and flat that way I have plenty of room to write I can do lists and or whole sentences whatever I need to do in each one of those little spaces 
and of course I outlined my weekly artwork my weekly spread artwork then I think it's gonna need a little bit of color so I'm just gonna go ahead where I'm gonna put the days of the week I'm using my orange and I have my big box for my weekly content what is gonna be for that week that I'm gonna do breaking it down from the monthly content of the big spread that we just finished we just do one or two whatever content for just that week and that way it helps helps me break it down into smaller sections and easier to do pieces then I've got my little tiny calendar right there in the corner and then of course this is week one so I'm gonna go ahead and label it week one and I'm trying to use the same color palette of orange and purple just to kind of keep it unified throughout the theme and of course I am going to take my pen and write in the days of the week and then of course the numbers the dates and I also put a little orange for the days of the week and for that first week I highlighted it with a light lavender so we'll know what week we're on this is my weekly content up there where I just wrote that in and then the days of the week it's not not too much oh forgot Saturday let me write Saturday and there we go I think I'm just gonna color this in it's looking too pale over here it needs a little bit of splash of color so I made the letters with purple and the background with orange now I'm just erasing all the pencil marks and I think he needs some white dots back there that orange looks just too flat so I'm Posca pin to the rescue with some white dots and then I'm taking some of that white and sort of cleaning up some edges and there we go let's flip through so I can show you that's my spread with that beautiful raven try to do it in a Van Gogh type gouache look and then my monthly content planning I went ahead and drew some lines because I felt like it needed them so I drew lines in there there's lots of room to plan content which was exactly what I needed and that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to learn what I need to do in my bullet journal to best facilitate my productivity that is my first week spread and that's all I'm gonna show because that's a lot but of course I'm gonna do spreads for every week and they'll be very similar and there you go thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this please hit the like comment share it with a friend that you think would get something out of this and don't forget to subscribe it really helps my channel thanks guys see you soon